Hello there and welcome to the Listen in Storytelling. My name is Vicky and this is another storytelling for Hertfordshire Year of Culture. I'm in a Hertfordshire town today that you might know. It's got a history of paper making and printing. There's a shopping centre locally that used to be called the Harlequin. There are lots of places to visit like the Pump House and the Coliseum and Cassiobri Park. And it's got a really, really well-known football club. <laughs> yes, it's Watford. And you might well know it, but if you don't, this is a storytelling for everyone. So welcome along wherever you are. I'm lucky enough to be just inside Watford Palace Theatre. And I'm heading into the auditorium, which is that way, and you get to come with me. Well, this theatre is Edwardian, built in 1908. That's well over 100 years ago now. And it's absolutely stunning. I wish you were here with me, I really do. I was lucky enough to work here for a little while and it's really lovely to be back to do some storytelling. But, you know, it's been a really strange time. It's 2020 and this theatre, like lots of places, has been closed for quite a long period of time. But excitingly, I think they've been talking about and trying to plan some live events again. So that's really exciting. And of course, we must be optimistic and look forward to a time when this theatre and all the others are open fully again. And we can celebrate coming to shows and pantomimes and all the other things that make places like this so special. And of course, we're here to celebrate Hertfordshire Year of Culture. So what's the story, Vicky, and why? <laughs> well, a theatre is where stories come to life. I've seen lots of plays and characters come to life on that very stage down there that's just out of view. And my storytelling involves something that comes to life as well. A puppet, in fact. A puppet called Pinocchio. Also, as I mentioned before, this area, Watford, has a history of paper making, and you'll see that Pinocchio has a coat made for him out of paper. And, of course, as we're in a theatre, I wanted to share a part of the Pinocchio story with you, where Pinocchio gets to come into a theatre and he sees part of a show. So the Pinocchio story was written in 1883, that's a long time ago now, by an Italian writer called Carlo Collodi. And this is a very well-thumbed copy of the book. On the side, there's a little picture of Pinocchio. I know you can't see it now, but I'll show you later. So the story starts with a piece of wood, but it's no ordinary piece of wood. Oh, no. It's a very unusual piece of wood, and it gets given to a woodcarver called Geppetto, who makes it into a puppet, Pinocchio. Now, Pinocchio is a very special kind of puppet called a marionette, and so that you can see what one looks like, I've brought one of mine from home to show you. So this is a very simple marionette. It's not Pinocchio, as you can see, I call it Miss Mouse. <laughs> but she looks a little bit like Pinocchio might. Uh, she's made of wood, as you can see, and she has little joints like that so that her legs move. And she has a little waistcoat. And you hold a marionette at the top and the strings here make the marionette move. So she can walk like that. And she can sit down. And she can look round, hello, and she can move her arms as well. Hello. <laughs> this puppet was brought to me as a present by a friend who went to Prague, and she saw lots of wonderful puppets, and she bought this one back for me. Now, of course, some marionettes have lots more strings than this one, and it's a real skill to use them. But uh, Miss Mouse here is quite simple and easy to use. <laughs> Take that as a compliment. <laughs> so now we know that Pinocchio was a marionette. But Pinocchio is magic. Oh, yes. Because he doesn't have any strings. He can move on his own. He can walk and talk 
puppet magic. He's come to life and he has all sorts of fun. And so to celebrate the town of Watford and this beautiful Watford Palace Theatre and performing and Hertfordshire Year of Culture, I'm going to tell you all about the time Pinocchio gets to go to the theatre. It was a cold November day, and the frost hung in icicles from the twigs of trees, glinting in the bright early morning light. Pinocchio the puppet clattered down the icy road with a new sense of adventure. Today, he was going, for the first time, to school. It was going to be a good day. He had a wide, wooden, beaming smile, and he was to go straight there. Straight to school, straight to school, I'm no fool, I'm going straight to school. Pinocchio held tightly in his wooden grasp a spelling book given to him by Geppetto. And Geppetto, who was very poor, had had to buy that spelling book by selling his only coat, leaving him rather cold. But Geppetto was also very good at making things. After all, he made Pinocchio. And so Pinocchio walked to school in a coat made of paper and a hat made from breadcrumbs and some shoes made from the bark of a tree. Pinocchio walked on. Straight to school, straight to school. I'm no fool, I'm going straight to school. He was nearly there, nearly at school, when, oh... What was that he could hear? Music, people, laughter, excitement, cheering and booing. That could only mean one thing, adventure. The town was ahead and the town gates were open and Pinocchio could hear the clatter and the chatter of the town and ooh, the smell of roast potatoes and chestnuts and oh, oh yes, Donuts in sugar and candy floss on sticks. <gasps> straight to school, straight to school. I'm no fool. I'm... Ooh. <laughs> Pinocchio wasn't going straight to school at all. He slipped in through the town gates and found himself in the crowd, standing beside a young boy who was straining his neck to see over people's heads. Well, Pinocchio was far too short to see anything. Um, excuse me, what's happening? said Pinocchio to the boy. Oh, can't you read? the boy replied. Oh, it says puppet theatre. Two lira admi ad 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 admittance. Puppet theatre? <gasps> Pinocchio was torn. He was meant to be going straight to school, but he was desperate to see the puppet theatre and he needed two lira, that's old Italian money, to get in, which he didn't have. How was he going to get some money? Hmm. Pinocchio remembered his hat. Excuse me, if I give you my hat, will you give me two lira? What? A hat? Made of breadcrumbs for the mice to eat? Nah. Oh. <gasps> Excuse me. If I give you my coat, will you give me two lira? Phew. A coat made of paper to go soggy in the rain? Nah. <gasps> Excuse me. If I give you my shoes, will you give me two lira? Phew, call them shoes. Wooden clogs, more like. Nah. Oh, dear. Pinocchio wasn't having much luck here, was he? But he had one more thing. Do you remember what it was? The spelling book that his father Geppetto had had to sell his only coat to buy. But Pinocchio wasn't thinking about his father's hardship, or the cold, or school, or going straight there. Excuse me. Look, I don't want your spelling book either. I can read. I'm not a donkey. 
And with that, the boy walked off. Oh dear. It looked like Pinocchio was never going to get into the puppet theatre. But then, someone else had overheard their conversation. And they said to Pinocchio, Excuse me, I will buy your spelling book for two lira. <gasps> Pinocchio is overjoyed. He took the two lira to the booth and bought the ticket and he pushed his way into the theatre. <gasps> the atmosphere was electric. But the play had already started. There on stage, the puppets were singing and dancing. Harlequin, Pancinello, Il Capitano. They were all just finishing the end of a song when the puppet Harlequin happened to glance into the audience and he saw Pinocchio right at the back. He stopped singing mid-note. Ha ha! <gasps> Pinocchio, my brother! The other puppets were amazed. They too saw Pinocchio at the back of the crowd and they stopped singing and dancing and they were all calling out to him, calling him to come and join them on the stage. Pinocchio! 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 <laughs> Pinocchio scrambled through the crowd and he did join them on stage and he was greeted by hugs and kisses and joy and happiness like he'd never known before. A truly happy moment at the theatre. But the crowd, the audience, were rather unhappy because the show had stopped and they wanted it to carry on. They were very cross and that led Pinocchio to the next part of his story. Well, that was just one of the many, many adventures that Pinocchio has. And if you like, you can read all about what else Pinocchio gets up to and see what happens in the end if he stops being such a naughty puppet and starts being good. <laughs> and if you have time, you could always see if you've got some spare paper in your house or an old newspaper and see if you can cut out some paper clothes for a puppet like Pinocchio. Maybe cut out a paper coat. I might make something out of paper for you, Miss Mouse. Mm, you'd like that. <laughs> well, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone at Watford Palace for having me here, especially to Sam. And uh, yes, thank you to you as well, Miss Mouse. And thank you all of you as well for listening in. I hope you can join me for another story again very soon. Bye for now.